Welcome to Europe ECR 2024. My name is uh, Salvatore Brugaletta and I'm an interventional cardiologist from Spain. So I'm happy to be here together with my good friend uh, Vijay Canadian, so interventional cardiologist from uh, Newcastle. So thank you very much uh, Vijay for being here. And we are here for discussing uh, the new guidelines coming from the European Society of Cardiology about MINOCA. So uh, Vijay, I have uh, several questions for you. So I will start uh, immediately. So asking you, so how we can define the patient uh, with MINOCA and why so it's uh, so important to define uh, this patient? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you very much for having me. Um, we're learning that up to tw uh, 15 to 20 percentage of patients that present with acute coronary syndrome have non-obstructive coronary arteries. So it often is a reflect reflection that uh, we tend to say nothing wrong with you and these patients are not provided with appropriate medical therapy. So in the guidelines, we make great emphasis on the appropriate management of patients with uh, MINUCA, which stands for myocardial infarction or injury with non-obstructive coronary arteries to ensure that we go from a working diagnosis to a final diagnosis to make sure that these patients are provided with the appropriate therapy uh, to prevent any recurrent events because we are learning that MINOCA is not a benign condition. In some studies, the mortality rate associated with MINOCA is equal to patients with myocardial uh, infarction with obstructed coronary arteries. Yeah, what is uh, very difficult to me, and uh, I, will look, uh, I would like you to ask you to drive us uh, in, uh, into this process, in the, how we can get the final diagnosis for this patient? Yeah, absolutely. Majority of these patients present to the cath lab as the first point of contact. So immediately we perform invasive coronary angiography and that demonstrate non-obstructive coronary arteries. And the, the key aspect is not to stop there. Clearly the patient has presented with symptoms, they have troponin rise, ECG changes. So when we do not see any obstructive disease, think of conditions that could present as minuca. Up to 60% of patients have atherosclerotic plaque disease or plaque erosion. How can we identify that? We have to use imaging to identify them. And patients also have other uh, conditions like spontaneous coronary artery dissection, coronary artery spasm, coronary emboli. So clear review of the coronary angi angiography in itself provi it will provide you with an initial diagnosis. If not, it is our responsibility to use the additional tools that we have in the, in the cath lab to come to a um, uh, final diagnosis if possible we can. We're also recommending left ventriculography to identify patients that might have, for example, Takotsubo cardiomyopathy. So let's say that now, so we define the patient, we have done the core diagnosis as you suggested, and then so next step will be the treatment. So how we should treat this patient? Yes, so absolutely. So if we identify plaque disease and we've made a decision that we're not going to intervene on them uh, interventionally, then these patients mu must be treated with appropriate pharmacotherapy. And again, in the guidelines, we make great emphasis on the long-term management. Long-term management not only applies to patients with obstructive disease, but also to patients with non-obstructive disease because they will have hypertension that needs treating, they will have cholesterol that needs treating, they, will have, they might be diabetics. So it's really important that these patients are followed up to make sure that all of these risk factors are controlled as well as they are on appropriate guideline recommended pharmacotherapy. Thank you Vijay. I mean everything is, uh, is clear. So let me try to summarize our uh, key points. So I will say that the first point is that um, uh, Minoka is uh, not uh, uh, rare as we think. So, but uh, it could be uh, fif from 15 to 20 percent of the patient with the ACS. Second point is that uh, so the diagnosis is called the working diagnosis. So it's something that we have to look for it. So by using, uh, as Vijay suggested, uh, uh, imaging technique, intracoronary imaging, or, or even left ventricular uh, ventriculography. And third point, which uh, I guess is the most important, is to focus on the long-term treatment of this patient, especially. So the, the, the treatment should not be finished with the discharge of the patient, but it should be continued treating the um, cardiovascular risk factors of these patients. So thank you very much Vijay for, uh, for being here and thank you Pleasure. very much for, to you.